Hello everybody and welcome again to another live session. Yay! So we're back again. Now this is part three of painting the squirrel. Now I've done a little bit more off camera just because it's exactly the same as we we're doing last time around. So I'm looking at doing, I've still got my palette here which is completely dry as a bone as you can see. So everything's really really dry because I've left it since last week. And that's the beauty about watercolors that you can come back to it and just re-wet to reactivate the paint. Now what I want you to do as well, if you stay tuned right to the end of the video, then I'm going to give away a free PDF again this week. Um, so a PDF of your choice. But the question of the day is, you ready for this? What is my favorite color? I don't always say it on my videos. So which or what is my favorite color um, from the colors which I normally use? So the first correct answer when I read the comments later on, it's right at the end, I'll, I'll check that out. We'll win a free PDF lesson from me. Okay, so there you go. So what is my favorite color within the colors which I very often use? Okay, there you go. There's a nice one for you. Thing is, I do like a lot of colors and very often I very often say, I like that color, it's very nice indeed. Now I'm going to look at today. I'm going to look at trying to darken this um, this fur down. Now I want to get some contrasting colours in there because when you look at the reference photo, which is not on the screen at the moment, let's see if we can bring it up for you. Was that nearly forgot the sound? What are you like, Julie? Hi, Paul. Hope is all is well and safe. Thank you, Kim and Sue. Hi, Paul. I'm. I think I'm doing this right. Okay. Can everybody hear me? And can everybody see me? Say yes or no. All right, okay, thank you. If you can do that, let me know, make sure everything's working on my end. Spot on for you, it looks like it is at the moment. Now the reference photograph, if we can bring it up, is that one there. I'll pop it up there for you. And I'll probably leave that for the duration, actually saying that, because at least then we've got it ready so you can see what I'm working from. Now the colors I'm working with at the moment are gonna be a mixture of burnt, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and raw umber. We're going to add in this time a little bit of lamp black. Now I don't use black on its own. I tend to use it with something, so with another colour normally. Hi all, yes, yes, thank you. Hello Jonathan, hello. Uh, thank you Kim. <laughs> thank you, at least I know it's all working. Okay, so I never really know. I mean I do test it out beforehand obviously to make sure all the contrast and the settings are right. On my little webcam, it's only a little Logitech webcam at the moment, that's all I'm using. So nothing too flash. So I do want to use my proper camera one day, my DSLR, but I need to buy an adapter which are not cheap. So one day I'll uh, get the pennies saved and get one of those. Which will give you a better quality video and I'll be able to zoom in with the video as well on that one. So this is burnt umber at the moment. So I want to mix more to a probably a creamy consistency. Now I'm working from my half pans, which are these here lot. Let's give us some general idea what I'm working from. And I tend to very lightly spray them with water first. And that's just going to be something like this here. This is a, a cheap spray bottle. I think they're worth about 50 pence, something like that when I bought it. And I tend to use that usually every time, probably about five or 10 minutes. I'll spray both the paints and very lightly give the ceramic palette here a, just a light dusting with water dusting, light coating with water. Try and get it right Paul today. You are live. Joe and I did a lovely walk earlier on so tired legs but not tired voice so that's okay. So in there I'm going to pop in a little bit of lamp black which makes a very dark brown. Again I'm looking for a creamy consistency. Now what I mean by cream when you look down the side of the palette hopefully you can see this okay. When it's creamy, it just gently rolls down the side, just like that. That's it. That's what I'm looking for. Something like that. If it's watery, it's like the water that you can get out of the tap. If it's milky, it's a little bit thicker than water, so it still runs down fairly swiftly. Creamy, just takes this good old time going down the side there. Now, in that, I'm going to get some. Let's have a quick look. Burnt sienna. I want to warm it now. So this is now burnt sienna going into that mix. All right, so burnt umber, lamp black, and burnt sienna, just to warm it a little bit more. A bit more, I think. 
So it's trying to get your colours right before you start, which is very often why, when I'm painting, I tend to do a lot of testing out first of all, as you can see, just to make sure things, you know, just about right. Because the thing is, if you get your colours right to begin with, there's some more testing there, look, then there's less chance you'll be making mistakes on the colours during the painting process. You will make some mistakes. You're bound to. I make mistakes. But uh, there'll be fewer mistakes. That's the way I tend to look at it. Now, here we go. Let's make a start. So now I'm going to work with my double zero brush. I'm going to load it. I'm going to roll it. And I'm then going to dab it. Just take a little bit of that paint off so it's not too blobby on the paper. Now, here we go. Let's make a start on the darkest areas I can see. And I'm going to zoom into my photograph in front of me here and start looking at the details. Now, if you do fancy having a go at painting one of my videos, because anybody that knows me know I do a lot of video tuition online. And um, the ones I tend to do are both on Patreon and on my own website, uh, Devon Artist, which you can see obviously in the link down the bottom left hand corner there. And I've got over over 50 videos on there now, which you're welcome to have a go. It's going to get a little bit of, um, in this case, it's going to be Cadmium Orange, Scarlet Lake and Burnt Sienna mix. Straight into there without washing the brush, because it's all going to mix on the paper anyway. And I've got two video tutorials on there you can have a play with, and have a go with. Get the reference photograph, the outline drawing. So just join up as a free member. do not cost you anything. So simple as that. And give it a go, see what you think. But as I say, my paid members have got um, over 50 videos on there, so they can really get stuck into it. Now, back onto this. Now, I've done a little bit of advertising, <laughs> which I don't like doing normally, but I tend to do it. I've got to do it. Obviously, I'm a business at the end of the day. So I'm just going to mix the two together in a little bit there. I'm trying to see where the darkest areas are. And on the photograph, there aren't that many really dark areas. When you look into this this painting, uh, well the photograph, the, this photograph by the way is by a cracking photographer called Roger Wasley, okay, and I will put his link there for you to have a look at because he's got a Flickr account which I have been given permission to um, to utilize his, his brilliant photographs. Um, so it's very kind of him to allow me to do that for my video tutorials. So Roger Wasley um, and I think I've got that knocking about somewhere for you to have a quick if you want to write this down it's entirely your choice and this is the one so put it where you can see it there you go so that one is Roger Wasley on Flickr so flickr.com forward slash photos forward slash Roger Wasley you can pause the video when you play this back later on and you'll see that on there okay so thank you Roger for the use of your photo there you go right back to it so carry on now. And if you've got any questions you want to ask me, I will be checking the comments shortly. Once I spend probably ten minutes having a painting session, I'll go through all the comments and um, see if anybody's got any questions that they want to ask me today on this lovely sunny Sunday today. Yeah, sun shining outside today here in North Devon. Now the thing when you're painting fur, you want to think about painting in layers. And if anybody followed the first two videos on here um, so I'm skipping in between so I'm doing a little bit more work in between off camera just to kind of kind of expedite it a little bit more really um, so you've got to work in layers you've got to work in in gradually darkening layers so you've got to think about the tonal values you've got to think about um, how watercolor works because obviously watercolor allows the white of the paper to show through it is a transparent medium at the end of the day Unless you're using opaque whites, which I use. So I'm going to get a little bit more of that darker colour now and start putting it down here. Now I'm barely touching the paper. Sometimes I'm tabbing it if there's too much on the brush. Sometimes I don't because it depends on how much it comes off on the brush when I first load it. And gradually work your way to the lighter section, which is getting lighter around the back here. Now I'm thinking about this going into the distance a little bit more. So when I work on the tail, this bushy tail and this red squirrel. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to blur it a little bit as well. I don't want it too detailed because that's further away. And because it's further away, I want it to appear that way as well. And in order to do that, I'm just going to make sure that 
I don't put too much detail into the tail, which is why I'm leaving that till later. So working underneath the arm there, just very gently. I'm not overloading as I mentioned. Now you can use if you want to at this stage, well, it's getting closer, to the, I tend not to use it for the top layers, is a coma or rake brush. Or in my case, my homemade brush, which I've called a replicator, which you can make yourself from an old brush which you're about to throw in the bin or in the trash, I know. And I know <laughs> some of my members on, on both Patreon and my website, uh, Devon Artist, that one down there, uh, <laughs> have made one of the one of the replicator brushes as well from an old brush old old brush so I will show you that very shortly what it is and you'll just probably have a giggle about it really because it looks terrible but it works it's great it works really well it really does I'm also when I'm doing this I'm looking at the direction of the lines so I'm really being very careful the angles which I'm going at and the length of the lines as well so while I'm chatting away to you my head the other side of my brain I have got one by the way, a brain, is thinking about the direction the lines go. So for example, I'm working on there, look, just to give you an idea. So that's working, over exaggerate a little bit, Paul, on purpose. If I went like that, it's too uniform, it's too, you know, parallel, it's too symmetrical, so it's not right. So what I would do for the lines, I'd do curves like so, but these curves would be gradually overlapped. So you imagine elongated crosses like that, but in curves. Okay, so they're gradually overlapping all the time. And as you do this, you find that this will you know, gradually build up in layers and in detail. So when we started the fur, we started with a very pale color. We let it dry, and then we came back in again with the next darker layer. You can go for the darkest layer if you want to, and then work on the mid-tones in between. But I like to kind of gradually work to, to the dark, really, which is a bit more traditional, I suppose. But that's the way I tend to paint, so from light to dark. And that's traditionally how watercolours have been you know, used over the years, haven't they, for many, many years. So that's with hardly any paint on the brush, and you can see the difference this has made so far. And then if you decide to dampen that down, working on fur, just a little bit like that, just very lightly clean damp brush, just to soften it back, soften that fur, that's it. Then when that's dry, I'll come back in, like I've done here, and add another layer over the top. Got the idea? So that's how I'd work with the fur, but you would have to start off with a very, 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 very pale colour. So that's probably even a bit too dark to begin with. So that's even paler. So that's more of a, a watery mixture there. So I'll give you some ideas how I tend to build up the layers on the fur uh, as I'm working on my videos. But um, as I say, just take your time. You've got to keep looking at the direction the lines go in as well. So, hello, everybody. That's quite a few people on today. Hello, how is everybody today? Um, I'm trying to see you there uh, very, very quickly. Who we got? So, Julie. Yes, well, hello, Julie Andrew. How are you? Uh, Sullen Raven. Hello, Sullen. Wildlife. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Sue. Hello, Sue Wizard. Kim Robertson. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, and Ray, hello, how are you today, dear chap? Good to hear you on here. Good to see you on here. Thank you very much indeed for coming along. Who else we got? So we've got Jonathan Brindle. Hello, Jonathan. How are you today? Hope everything's okay. Hope it's nice and sunny where you are. Uh, 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 Kim Robertson. Hello, Kim. Yes, you said earlier on, and I did answer that as well. I know I did. A little bit more down there. You can see the way this is all kind of working. Now I'm layering these lines over the top of one another all the time. So I can still see some of the detail underneath showing through. Um, okay, very quickly. Unag, hello, how are you? Yep, I can hear you, thank you. Belinda B, hello, Melinda. Good to see you on this afternoon, or I don't know where it is where you are. Um, Jonathan, Kim, Scarlet Lake, oh yeah. <laughs> Spixing, ha, oh, yes, I know, I know. Thank you, all works fine. Um, would a water droplet from a pipette be too much water at once? It can be sometimes, Melinda. It can be sometimes. It depends on the consistency of the paint that you want to get in there. So if I use my pipette, which is this one here, as you can see, I'll try and drop it onto the paint in here. There you go, like that, look. Just dampen that off. Ah, there we go. 
Um, yes. So if I use that, just turn that round one way, because I'm not using this one. There's one droplet. Sometimes <laughs> there's about three. Sometimes that can be too much. Try in that one there. I'll tell you, we'll go for a darker colour. So one droplet. There we go. And you know, they often find that one droplet can be too much. So sometimes I just dab my brush into the water pot. Then after dabbing it, I just take it over a kitchen towel just a little bit once or twice something like that and then I'll wet the area that I want and you can see with this one now just by doing it that way around I've got quite a reasonable consistency from this old paint which has dried up from last week see what I mean and that's just enough to kind of work with some of the finer details for that but that will dry fairly quickly however that's about three drops of water in there but that's really pulled up down there as well, so it's a little bit too much. You've got to remember that my board here is on a bit of an angle. I tend to work on an angle, I like that way around, because of the fact that, um, well, one, it saves your back as well. So I've, I've spent many years reading water meters for the water board before I went full time as an artist five years ago now. And obviously after that, well, I had eight years of bending down 400 times in a day reading water meters in footpaths then your, ten, your back tends to go a little bit after that so to work on a near on straight back is the way I am at the moment is ideal for that okay so I hope that's apart from the back Melinda I hope that's explained a little bit about the water droplets so sometimes it's beneficial it depends on how watery you want that paint to be okay so what else we got uh, people with the guesses thank you very much indeed Maria Cleaver how are you today um, Robert Bratton, hello Robert. Uh, <laughs> some good guesses going on here, I must admit. Do you normally put a light wash on the paper to start before starting the hair? Yes, I do occasionally, yes I do. If I'm going to start on the hair, what I tend to work on, Julie, is... I don't know if you've seen from my tutorials. I'll get a larger brush, like a size 5, something like this one here. And for example, I've put a wash on the, on the uh, tail... Uh, for at the moment that's that's what I started off with to begin with and I'm going to add soften detail though this time over the top of that so I'll add the wash on first I, I very often call that the foundation wash because that is the foundation the buildings the building them um, foundation of all the detail to go on on the top so if, kind of think about that in the sense of let's say if you're building a property okay just bear with me a minute if you're building a property honest then you've got to put the foundations down first then on the top of those foundations you've got to think about adding the the walls you know that the structure on top of that and the structure in this case is going to be the fur then you put all your little frilly bits inside there then just to decorate it all which will be things like whiskers and just all the highlights and so on see what I mean so I mean that's an idea sort of a rough analogy to give us some ideas on how, what I mean by that so get your foundation down first, which is your watercolour washes, and then once it's nice and dry, um, unless you need to kind of work on the tonal values of that, so if you want it slightly darker in places, then you can start adding the detail over the top. Okay? Right, I sound a bit like a politician then. Too many pauses in my sentence, I know, I noticed that. Now I'm going to work on the pause a little bit here. Now again, I'm trying not to get too much paint on the brush here, because I want to try and keep it fairly fairly fine and I'm looking at where these little joints are. I'm just going to add a little bit of this colour to that uh, cadmium orange uh, Scarlet Lake and Burnt Sienna just into the corner of that. I'm going to work in a little corner of that palette and then start thinking about I want a bit of colour in there but I also want some dark if you know what I mean so I'm trying to get a mixture of the two without going too dark because these are not that dark really within there and you find when you're looking at these little these little hands, these little paws well I can see a claw there as well just just peeking out the side there so I'm just going to put a little outline there to begin with is that they tend to act like a V shape towards the center of each one you know so I'm just looking just right to the center there as I'm talking to you and adding that in just with a nearly dry brush now I want these lines to be as fine as possible and just think about the shape of the the claws themselves 
which is around there. They've got a pink that was out a little bit in the map. So a bit of a lizarding crimson and probably I'm trying to think actually I might add a little bit of uh, scarlet lake in with that lizard and crimson just to give it a nice kind of rich feel. So my lines are now getting tighter, they're getting smaller all the time. I'm just going to switch to a little bit of burnt sienna and the uh, the raw rumba mix and start thinking about a little bit more colour around this pore now. Now you can see how fine I like to work and it depends how fine you want to go. I do say a lot to my, uh, I say this a lot to my members on on my website and on Patreon that you know you can paint as much detail as you want, you don't have to go as detailed as I go you know you, you can, if you think you've done enough and you're happy with what you've got then that's fine, leave it at that you know, that, just leave it at that, if you've enjoyed the process and you're happy with what you've produced then that's brilliant, that's all I want to know and by doing so that's, I mean that's one of the benefits I get you know, I get the buzz when people tell me that they've, they've done this, they've enjoyed it, and um, you know, from the videos which I do. And uh, that to me is a massive bonus. It puts a big smile on my face, especially when I see people's paintings as well. So when you're working from my tutorials, be it on my website or on Patreon, then please let me know, you know when you've done something. Just send me a photograph of the painting. I'd love to see it. I really do. I always get that buzz when I see somebody's paintings, you know, from the work I've done, from the videos. Okay, now you, you can see I'm working on the same process as I did on this side. Thinking about the overall shape. See how this is getting furrier all the time, <laughs> which it is. A little bit more of that darker colour here for the more kind of creased areas in between each individual kind of toe or finger or what would you call it? Come on, help please. While I'm live. Now, if anybody's watching this on catch up, sounds like um, a television program, doesn't it? Then please put a comment, I don't mind. I do answer all the comments, I always do. I uh, spend a lot of time in the evenings <laughs> on the laptop just going through people's comments, which is great. I love it, I love doing it. I do my best to answer questions and queries that people have got. Okay, gradually increasing these thinking about that v-shape all the time here what you got to be careful of as well is not to lose the brightness at the same time one thing we can do with this is also lift off paint as well so this is now a little bit of raw sienna it's going to add over the top of some of these details so i'm just using the paints i used last week that's all i'm doing and that's the benefit through as I say, watercolours is it's not smelly. You know, I used to work work in oil paints. I used to do um landscapes and portraits many years ago. So I was a portrait artist and I've always enjoyed painting wildlife as well. But then I turned to wildlife quite a few years ago now. Um and obviously with watercolours many years ago with watercolours. And I just love painting wildlife. But when you think about working with oil paints and all the other mediums, as lovely as they are, that lovely creamy feel. I used to have to use a lot of turpentine, a lot of um, linseed oil, and so on to kind of get the colours the right consistency and to get the vibrance of you know, the vibrancy of the colours, the extra sparkle, and so on. But the problem I used to have is I used to is the smell. I used to get on my chest. I'm asthmatic, so you think, oh no. Which is another reason why I went towards colours because I know it's it's non-toxic. It's not smelly at all. It's a clean medium. You don't need a lot of space to work because I've never really had a workspace to that degree other than the kitchen table normally. And I've got a spare bedroom here, which is handy. So watercolours are very good for you know very little space. I'll tell you one thing I'd like to see, if you ever get a chance, as well if you're on my Facebook page, I'll see if I can find the link for you just while I'm here. Um let's have a quick look, one second, see if I can find my link. Where's it gone? Social media, there we go. What about that one? I'll be there in a minute. One sec. There we go. Now, when you look at that there, that's the YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook. So, facebook.com forward slash the Devon Artist Paul. That's me, you know. That's me. That's little old me. So, forward slash the Devon Artist Paul. 
go on to there on Facebook. If you don't get a chance to write this down, you can always play it back. And even so, go on Facebook, type in the search bar, The Devon Artist, and you find me. And you're welcome to post your paintings of any tutorial that you've done from me, okay? Over the years, within that Devon Artist page. I don't mind at all. It's good to see what people have done. Now I'm just working on the side of this paw because it's a little bit too flat at the moment. Again, I'm looking at the direction that these lines go all the time and thinking about just pulling some of these lines, these hairs up. Because what I'll do, I'll do the other paw off camera because what I want to go on to in a bit is the nut. <laughs> so we'll paint that little nut it's got in its, in its uh, little paw there. Oh, it's actually got in its mouth, hasn't it? It's in its, in its mouth. Then darken this down here to get a bit of contrast within that area. And the same, probably towards the fronts of these little fingers here. Okay, a little bit more around there. So, as I mentioned, the brush I'm using is a size double zero. And the make of the brush is a Windsor and Newton. So it's a Windsor and Newton. And if you can read this on the camera, I'll, I'll leave it there just briefly. So it's a Windsor and Newton Cotsman series 111. And as I say, it's a size double zero. Now these are synthetic brushes, so they're not expensive to, to buy. I think this one cost me about three pounds. And I have quite a quite a collection of these this particular brush because I do go through them. And what I mean by that as well is that they don't last that long. You know, um, they're quite a cheap brush. But what I like about them is the snap rate on the brush. Now, if you don't know what the snap rate is, all it simply is, one second, just do that a little bit there, is how quick, just wash that out, show you what I mean, how quick the brush springs back. So if I put my finger on that brush there, look, how quick does that spring back? So that's your snap rate. This has got a quick snap rate, which means it's a fairly stiff bristle brush in the sense of you've got more control with the brush. It's not all over the place on the on the paper. Some other brushes which I've got, I can't quite get my hand on one at this minute, so I've got a headset on, are have a very slow snap rate. So therefore you find you can't I can't quite get as tight as, as I want to be with the detail work. Because I need quite a good snap rate on on a brush. So there's a little tip for you, so have a look at your brushes. When Next time you, you pick your brushes up, have a look at the snap rate and see how quick they tend to snap back. You know, and uh, you think, ah, well, that's quite one I can control that one. I can, you know, that's the idea behind it. Okay, just a little bit more down there. Now, I mentioned what a bit of a lizard in crimson. I'll tell you what we've got, we've got a bit of colour in there, actually, haven't we? So I think that's a bit of that's from last week. That's a bit of a lizard comes in there, and probably a touch of Scarlet Lake, I think. And then we're going to add this in to this side first of all. Can't see any more down there. Oh yeah, we've just got this one here, haven't we? Going to soften down that line now. I don't want it too sharp on there. Just tap that line in. So a bit of pink in there. <laughs> Put its claws, and I think that would just about do for now for that area so any questions as I mentioned you want to fire away I'll do my best to answer for you while you've got me live on the internet on this Sunday afternoon here in the UK the time here is 3.29 just going to very lightly work out where this claw goes there as I mentioned I'll be live for roughly about one hour today as I tend to do every time I go live. And I may go live next week as well. Now, if you haven't had my newsletter, which I send out, I do send out to let people know I'm going live uh, or anything else that's happening, such as the tutorials I'm doing. I'll show you one in a minute, actually, so I'm going to go for a quick coffee break for two minutes very shortly. And I'll show you one, one of the ones we're working on on both Patreon and my Devon Artist website. Um, then obviously if you haven't got the newsletter and you'd like to know when I'm live again then just please subscribe to the newsletter if you subscribe to my newsletter on my Devon Artist site down there and I'll keep mentioning it then when you subscribe you get an automatic link 
to a free PDF document, one of my lessons on PDF format, on how to paint a house sparrow. That's the one I've got on there, which you get access to once you become a subscriber. Okay, so if you fancy subscribing to my channel, then click on that one down there. Okay, there you go. And I'm just going to add a little bit more down there. Okay, that'll do now for now for the poor. I think what I might do is kind of fine tune this a little bit. Maybe pull a little bit of paint off in places, and I can do that. I'll give a quick demonstration before to uh, before I go to any little advert or anything like that. I go over one area very lightly with a damp clean brush, and I've just lifted off that line there. And this will add the extra detail over the top of the docks. <laughs> Honestly, I do this a lot. And you can see the lines I've just pulled off there. See those two? And they're the ones I've just uh, removed. So a damp clean brush. Keep going over the same place time and time again, but barely touching that paper. So two airs and air. That's all you're doing. And then lift. And we've got another one just there. And then the direction changes again. To that side. And the same here. Now every now and then you've got to keep washing that brush out because all you're simply doing is picking up the colour off the paper then basically putting it back on again. So keep washing that brush out in between doing any lifting off techniques. Okay. Right, okay. So any last minute questions? Let's have a quick look. Uh, Sue. Yes, I have. I've got one on Patreon actually. I'll have to dig that, that link out for you. Okay. So if you send me an email Oh, you won't be able to watch it. Are you on my Patreon, Sue? Let me know. Okay, if you're on Patreon, then you'll be able to watch it because it's on there and you need to be a, a paid member to be able to see those at the $5 upwards level. So that's $5 a month um, people pay. And that's patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. Okay, so they give you some ideas where we are on there. Um, and then you'll get access to that. Uh, do you buy them by the box? Michelle, um, sorry, Melinda, sorry, Melinda B, do you buy them by the box? Do you mean the paints I buy, Melinda? Or do you mean the brushes? The brushes I buy, I buy them individually. I just go online to companies like saa.co.uk. I get mine from there. I don't get paid by them, so don't worry. Uh, to buy these type of brushes. Um, and also, whoever can find them cheap, Jackson's Art is another one. I get from there. And even on Amazon, I've been on there and bought these brushes before as well. The paper, again, I'll get that from SAA, from Jackson's Art. Penzo has got the best offer on. I do shop for offers. You know, who, who doesn't? And also, again, on Amazon for, for the paper, sorry, in this case. So if you want to know about the paper I've got, this is Bockingford. It's a £140. It's a not, okay, capitalised N-O-T, uh, which basically means it's not hot pressed. So it's not gone through hot rollers in the making process. So it's got a little bit of a texture on it. If it's HP or hot pressed, it would have gone through hot rollers to get a nice smooth kind of texture, which a lot of botanical artists tend to use. Um, and so that's Bockingford, and it's glued all the way around. So it's a Bockingford block. Okay, I'll give you some ideas of the paper I use as well. Right, okay. Uh, right, I'll be back just in a brief second while I just have a quick slurp of coffee. Just rest my voice box for a minute, and I'll see you very shortly when I'm back. But for now, there's just a little thing which I've done, which we're obviously working on on both Patreon and my Devon Artists website on what we're working on this month. Now here's some video clips from my main watercolour video and how to paint a very realistic looking wolf. Let's get started.
Now that'll give us some ideas on how to paint a wolf in watercolour. Now I'll guide you right from the beginning all the way through to the final brush strokes in over 6 hours of video tuition, where I'll teach you various techniques along the way. So let's make a start on painting this very nice looking wolf and let's get the brushes wet. Right, hello everybody, I'm back again. See, I've not gone long, am I? There you go. <laughs> right. Um, I noticed there's a question there as well. I just noticed um, Melinda. Yeah, the paints I'm using, I'd say Windsor & Newton paints, which are these here a lot. Okay, I mentioned earlier on. But these are Windsor & Newton. It's a mixture of two Windsor & Newton. So it's Windsor & Newton Professional, which are some of these, and also the student ones, which are the Cotsman range as well. I use them both. You know, the difference I find really is that the student ones, the pigmentation is much more dense, much more, uh, it's got a richer colour sometimes as well with the professional version. But the common ones tend not to last quite as long because I find they've got a little bit more binder in them, so therefore they, they do run out, they do kind of wear away very quickly when I'm working on them. So it's always wise, always buy the best you can afford to buy in the sense of paints, brushes, and paper. Okay, that will make a big difference to the way that you can paint. Honestly, it's not just being able to paint the picture, but it's having the right colours. Because one of the frustrating things people find is trying to get that colour just right, don't they? You know, and you think, well, what paints are you using? And I find out they bought some paints from one of the discount shops, for example. Yeah, they're okay. Don't get me wrong. If that's all you've got, then that's fine. Use them. But if you can afford to buy better quality paints, then I'd suggest if you get into the hobby and you enjoy doing the hobby, then you look at thinking about, okay, Christmas is coming or whatever. <laughs> That's the best way you know to do that, isn't it? And then put it on the Christmas list <laughs> uh, for when um, when it's when it's time so you can try and get them elsewhere. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so that's what I recommend really with the paints. So yeah, Cotman and the professional ones I tend to use. There are some cracking paints out there though. And I find the Winsor Newton ones, I've got used to them over the years and it's what I've always used. I've got some Dale Rowney as well, which I've got some of those, but I tend not to use them quite as much. It's what you get used to using, isn't it, over the years. Okay, now, um, Maria. Oh, that's very kind of you. The nice thing about you is your modesty, Paul. Your paintings are amazing. Thank you very much indeed. Indeed, indeed, Maria. It's very kind of you. That's beautiful, Paul. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Um, what colour would be a good substitute for Scarlet Lake in either Daniel Smith or Winsor & Newton? To be honest with you, the one I use is, I think it is Winsor & Newton, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll double check that one when I come offline, okay? Can't check it at the moment, well, well obviously I'm live, but uh, Una, I'll, I'll check into that because I'm sure the one I've got here is a Scarlet Lake from Winsor & Newton. Because you've got to remember there's two different, as I just mentioned, about the Winsor Newton paints. You've got the Cotsman range and you've got the, the professional range. And I've got both. So I can't remember if the, if the Scarlet Lake was Cotman or the professional ones. I can't remember now. But say, I will look into that for you, okay? And I'll find out. Because I don't like not knowing. <laughs> you find them like that. Now, okay, I did say I'm going to work on the nut. Because I get carried away otherwise. Now, the nut itself, I can see the colours. I'm going to see what colours I've already got mixed up. So I might go for the burnt sienna colour, which I've got there, cadmium orange and burnt umber. And I might use that initially for the first, maybe the first layer. See how it goes on first of all. If it's too much, we'll just work on something a little bit lighter, a bit paler, probably a little bit of raw umber in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a gradual outline around the very edge of this knot. Okay. Oh, um, I forgot to mention, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, if you do so, when I do go live, then YouTube will notify you that I've gone live. Hopefully, they should do. So when you click on the subscribe button down below, click on the bell icon after you're, sus after you're subscribed. Okay, at least that way around you should be notified whenever I put a new video on here or whenever I go live. And uh, I'm very often either live or put a video on, as you know, if you follow my work on here. 
That looks like a long tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, it looks like a tongue on there. That's no good. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of raw umber. Now if you notice, I tend to have a piece of paper down here to kind of protect the surface from the natural oils on my hand. So I just grab a little bit of that with my double zero brush. I don't always use my double zero brush for taking paint out of the half pans because it can ruin your brush. You want to use an old beaten up brush for that if you can. And the one I used, by the way, I was going to tell you about my replicator, wasn't I? Um, this is an old beaten up brush which I've had for many, many years. It's back from my acrylic and oil painting days, which is many years ago. And you can see the paint's even worn off the handle. But it works. It's ideal. It's a stiff, bristled brush. Yeah, okay, try saying that when when you can't, you know, when you've been down the pub. Um, so it's a stiff, bristled brush, and uh, it's ideal for doing the mixing work with. Never do an ambiguous mixing with your detailed brushes because you just very quickly ruin that brush. And one thing I also tell people as well is that never put your brushes tip down like that into your water pot and leave them. Oh, no, sacrilege, can't do that. No, because it will bend the bristles on the brush. It could ruin those brushes. Now, anybody that knows me will know that I don't use a traditional brush rest. I've made my own. And if you go, when you do go to my website down below, Devon Artist, then you'll find I've got a, a blog section on there, which I've written quite a few blogs. And one of them is about making my brush rest, which is like a letter T. I can't show you because I've got the camera fixed. So it's a letter T, basically. So it's got a long sponge on the top. And my, bris my brushes lay downwards like that, pointing downhill. And any residual water within the metal ferrule here would drip out onto the surface out down below. If it was that way around, when you wash your brush out, the water will seep in to the metal ferrule and hold in there. And what can happen then, one, the bristles can do this, and two, I might have one to show you here actually, to give you some ideas what I mean by that. One second, I will show you one which did this, this happened to a couple of years ago, which is that there. So because it was pointing that way around when it was wet, you can see the water soaked in to the wooden handle and all the paint splintered off after a while. Whereas, I've been using this one for probably a similar kind of period of time as that one and that's how well it's kept because I'm keeping that one that way around and not that way around. Got the idea? Okay. So if you can store your brushes pointing downhill, not uphill, and if you have a look on my website you find, as I said, that there's a blog on there, one of the many blogs I've written on how to store your brushes or how I store my brushes anyway. You know, it's different to other people and everybody's got their own ways of doing things, but that's the way I tend to do it. Okay, right, so carry on now. Working with this raw sienna. Sorry, raw rum though, actually, not raw sienna. I'm thinking about the shapes as well within this little knot. <laughs> There's quite a lot of shapes in there, which there are. A lot of texture, but I'm just working on the first layer. Now, we mentioned earlier on about working light to dark. And that's basically what I'm doing here gradually increasing the details within this little nut and I can see that each section is curved within there and gradually thinking about this curve thinking about the tones I can see within there so that it's going to get darker as it comes over so this is just that first layer remember we can add detail and darken this as we go along and this is going to be a very small area to work on which is nice which means it won't take long to get this nut finished so that's that little bit if I turn my palette around again I'm going to go where's my mixing brush this time around I'm going to go for a little bit of burn sombra again within that one there so bear with me a minute while I just work my paint up again work it work it now what you must do as well is that when you pick up a colour from your half pan, it's okay going back to it because it's the same colour, but when you go to a different colour, keep washing this brush out because otherwise you're going to infect the other colours you've got. I did that once by putting, um, what was it? 
I think it was phthalo blue which I put into the lemon yellow by mistake and it took me ages to clear that out it really did the lemon yellow obviously turned bright green which is no good and I'm going to go in a little bit of the burnt sienna in there as well that's better look how rich that is up it's a lovely color and that is very similar to the little nuts we can see on the screen there Okay, very quickly there, see if we can look. Indeed, I wondered about the difference between the Pro and Cotman. Thank you. Jonathan Brindle, Windsor Newton Professional has Scarlet Lake, but not Cotman. Ah, that's probably what it is then, Jonathan. Thank you for answering that one for us. Uh, Kim, hello Kim, sucks the water up into the ferrule uh, too and loosens the glue. Correct, it does, doesn't it? Yes, which is why I store mine facing downhill. And let's just say that from a broom handle and um, a paint rolling tube, it's amazing what you can make, you know. It really is. It really is. you see what I mean if you go on that blog there. Right, okay. So I'm going to gradually build this up now. This is a next layer of detail over the top. Oh, I did say to you, didn't I? Oh, I will show you in a minute. Honestly, about my replicator brush, which is like a rake brush. Or, or the um, coma brushes which are also named as well aren't they I just want to add these details in first so, so bear with me and I'll show you once I've got the nut painted how long have we been on 46 minutes I'm going to stay on for another well 14 minutes or so before I go so if you've got any questions you want me to answer at the last minute dot com then you know very well I will I'll go through the questions later on and I'll also give the answer to my favorite color as well from one of the colours which I use on a regular basis. <laughs> That's a clue, isn't it? Because I use it quite a lot. There you go. All right. But what is it? Um. So gradually building this up, looking at the shapes, I can see this is going to get darker as it gets on this side here. Now, beauty about using the same colour, you can use keep going to the same colour like this. And anywhere that's dry, you can add another layer over the top and it's going to be even darker. Even though it's the same colour, the same mixture, the same consistency. So you're gradually layering the colours as you go. Come on, nut. I'm going to darken down below the, the mouth now. One thing I want to paint next time round with you is the nose. So work on the nose and the mouth area down there. And I'm going to do some of this off, off camera because I want to try and get all the fur completed just about, including the ears, which is the same way we've done the rest of the body. And then what we'll do next time around is work on the nose and also working on the watercolour white. So I'm going to show you how to add watercolour white next time as well. Hopefully we should be able to. And also a little bit of suggestion of woodwork. So we do need to do that as well. That might be part 25 or something. But we <laughs> we do need to paint some woodwork, I know, as well down there. So next week we'll try and work on, as I say, the watercolour white, uh, working on the nose, trying to define that nose and make it look more realistic than what it is. It's, it's only like a basic wash of colour on there at the moment, it's basic details. So if you want to come back possibly next Sunday, I'll let you know if, you, if you're on my subscribers list on here. And we click on subscribe and then the bell icon. Or if you're on my newsletter list, then I will be sending, because I, I do all this myself, I do all the newsletters, everything like that, um, as you I'm sure you realise, and all the video editing, it's all me. I've got Joe that works on the website, my Devon artist, that's my partner Joe, and she's very, very good. She's brilliant, in fact. Love her to bits, I really do. But both, basically all the artist stuff, that, which, I, which is just done by me, so there you go. Right, so yeah, if you want to know what it is, just let me know, and then you could, um, if you want to see the rest of this with the watercolour white next time round, then please do that. Now I'm going to go for the slightly darker colour, and this is going to be that brownie mix which we just had earlier on. Okay, just to get this a little bit darker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've just seen what you said, both. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> Sullen, Andre, Melinda, yeah, good guesses, good guesses, you lot. Yeah, Dale Rowney is also a Scarlet Lake. Thank you, thank you, Sullen. 
Uh, and now this is actually darker, not there, but down the bottom here. So let's try and now define this knot. Let's get a little bit darker, more kind of defined on there. Uh, let's have a quick look. Yep, so that's that one there. It's looking at the reference photograph here. Now my eyes are going backward and forward, backward and forward to that reference photo. I can just see a little claw underneath that actually. Every few seconds. And it really is. That's how I tend to paint. So every few seconds my eye is flicking backward and forward. Or eyes. I can't do one. I'm not that clever. It's got to be both eyes I'm afraid. And just gradually tickle the little details now. We're in this little knot. See, this is getting a bit more formed now, isn't it? It's starting to get darker. So when you start getting the darker colours on, when it really comes together, um, so it's Alina. Hello, how are you? I just noticed that pop up on the corner of my eye. I've got the laptop by the side of me here, just just buzzing away. I just saw a um, little flicker on the screen out of the corner of my eye. Even I'm looking at the photograph and the painting at the same time. I'm not that clever either. So welcome on board. So you can see I'm adding these darker layer in now. This this burnt umber, lamp black, and I think we put a little bit. What was it? Burnt sienna in there as well. And this is where we start to think about those extra details that we can see. But don't overload the brush because I want to make sure that these details are very fine. We're going to stipple tap all the time. I'm going to go over the same area again down here. I want this line to be darker. We can just make a thicker version. Or I can grab some from the side of the mixing mold there, look, which is and just just wet it a little bit. And then that will be thicker. Just like that. And then start to think about the overall roundness of the shape within this little tiny knot. Somebody said that about my head once, I don't know why that was. Okay, and then a little bit more just underneath the mouth. The dark and where it goes inside the mouth. And we're just about there. Tiny, tiny knot. There we go. And if we wanted to at this stage as well, well, when we get the watercolour white out next, next time around, we'll add a little bit of detail with a few white highlights in there, which we can tint down, and I'll show you how to do that next time as well, how to tint watercolour white. I'm hoping next time I'm live, it might be the same kind of time next week, but it all depends on the situation here, depends on how I'm working with the main videos. I'm obviously videoing at the moment for um, my website and also for Patreon. So because I'm always videoing during the week, I need to be in a good place to be able to kind of switch all the setup around and take the camera away and put the webcam on instead, which is what I've got on now, and uh, do that. So I'll let you know, as I said, via the newsletter or via um, YouTube or Facebook as well. I tend to put a note on there, okay? Right, okay, lift off a little bit like that. Okay, that's that bit done. Now I'm going to tell you about, finally, finally, the replicator brush. You ready? So this is a replicator brush. I'm just going to grab it off my my little storage here. And basically what it is, you're going to laugh at this, aren't you? <sighs> okay, all right, yeah, okay, yeah, I know. Yeah. Basically what it is, an old, 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 this is, um, which one was this one then? Windsor Newton Scepter Gold 2, size 2 brush, which was ancient, and it's fallen to bits, and the bristles are pointed completely gone, it was ready for the bin. So I decided to buy this, that's not I didn't, I decided to use this, and use it as a, as I say, like a replicator brush, as I've called them. You can buy designated, I'm just stretching here, brushes, which is something like this one here. This is a coma brush and this is one by um, Rosemary & Co. So the Coma series 22230 two, 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 so 2230 two, and it's a quarter inch Coma brush that one which are great they work really well. The only thing I find with bought ones as well is that the lines tend to be very I don't know parallel. So if I just load this up and just take a little bit of paint off actually Paul so it's not too overloaded and you can tap it a couple of times and then you find 
With this one, you can create lots and lots and lots and lots of hairs. Or feather, you know, if you're working on feathers, very, very quickly without rushing a painting, because you should never rush a painting. Okay, see what I mean? So that's really built up very quickly indeed. So you do that, as I mentioned earlier on, with the lighter layer first, a mid tone layer second, and then the darkest layer on the top. And you can have other layers in between that. You know, sometimes I'll go four or five layers of paint. But as you can imagine, the detail you can get by using something like this. So basic, so silly in some ways as well, but it's obviously very, very effective. And it works really well. One of my members, as well on my website, um, made one the other day. I'm trying to think what, you know, which one it was. But one made one the other day, and she did a really good job of it. You know, her husband came into the room and he said to her, you know, what are you doing with that brush? <laughs> what on earth are you doing with that brush? Okay, I'm just going to show you how I did this roughly. Old pair of pliers, old brush, old brush, remember, in case it doesn't work out. Get hold of it like that and squeeze really, really hard. Now, when you flattened it and ruined the metal ferrule, then what you would do is just twist it out, turn around, twist it out, and then you've got yourself a brush. Now, these vary in shape, size, and detail. You might get three prongs, you might get four, you might get two. doesn't really matter, but it works really well indeed. So that's one way. The other one I've made, I use this for lifting off. I'll just show you this brush here, look. And this is one, again, it was a, a round brush with, a, with um, a very blunt tip. Again, and this is a, a very cheap brush, actually. This is a Royal Tacklon. So Royal Tacklon is, I think it's one of the... Um, you know the discount shops I do go in them don't tell anybody but I do go in them Shh, don't tell anybody okay now that's one of these but I'll go in there to buy these cheap brushes because it can be really useful as well this is a cheap watercolor brush and again I've crimped it I've squished it with a pair of pliers and then I've laid it down lay me down on the flat surface and then trimmed the edge now that gives me a nice surface I'll just show you what I mean very quickly to be able to pull paint off. So I'll do it on the darker so you can see it. See if I do this just a few times like that, get some tissue, and then I can lift that paint off. Look at the difference effect. That works really well, doesn't it? And the good thing about that is that you can just keep it very, very, very fine, so barely touching that paper again. And you can create even thinner lines as well. So there are things you can make yourself just with some old, old brushes and save some pennies from going to the shop. I'm not a bit of a tight person, but you know, it's good if you can save some pennies here and there as well. Okay, very quickly look at the um, the comments on there. Uh, quick, uh, hi everyone. It is a lovely photograph, this one, Andre, as well. As I say, it's from Pete Blanchard. You probably, I don't know if you follow him on Flickr, so I know you've got some cracking photographs yourself on Flickr. Um, this is a very good one. Christine Baker. Bateman. Hello, Christine. How are you? Beautiful painting. Thanks for showing us in detail. Oh, hopefully you can see it all okay. Thank you. Um, Belinda B. Did you also trim that yourself? Yes, I did. On that one I've just shown you, the Royal Tacklon one, that's one I trimmed. I cut the corners off, basically. So it was flattened after I squeezed it. And then I just got a, a decent um, craft knife. You know the ones with the breakable tips, which is... <laughs> Bear with me. One of these here a lot. So I've got a decent craft knife like that. And all based on, I won't do this on the painting, obviously, is just trimmed it by pushing down on a flat surface. You know them green chopping boards you get, which are self-healing boards? That's what I've got here, and that's how I did that one. But it works really well, so therefore that will give you some ideas what you can use when you're doing that. Okay, what we got time-wise? I've got a couple of minutes, guys, so I'm going to go in a little bit. Ingenious Paul, thank you. Your painting looks just great. Well, I've got to do more of this, Sue, off-camera, because obviously it's easier for me to paint when I'm not talking even though I do it all the time when I'm uh, doing the videos. Um, but it's obviously easier for me that way, so I can just talk and paint rather than play with a computer. Um, so I'm going to do this off camera and just try and get the fur completed. Now everybody knows how I do it, and they've seen the process I work from, working with the layers, working with the double zero size brush I'm working with now, adding the colour in, this is that blacky brown. See, I'm very technical with my words. Blacky brown. Brownie black. I know. 
I do that in my videos, that's how I am. I'm not one for getting into very arty jargon, you know? I'm not an arty jargon person by far. I've been painting for probably about 41 years now. I think it's about that now when I started painting. Um, and I've never really got into the, the kind of arty, you know, the kind of arty side of things <laughs> in that sense. It's not me. Which is why on the videos I explain things in layman's terms, in the way I tend to think. Which is not always the best option. Okay, right. So you can see now again the darker layer, just adding this in with a nearly dry brush. Because when it's nearly dry, you get the finest of marks. And this brush is getting a little bit worn now. And it's doing okay though. You can see this is just gradually adding just a hint of dark within that. Reload, load it, roll it, tap it on some kitchen roll to keep it nice and light, nice and fine. Then add some more in, just over the top. Okay. So, as I said, if you stay tuned next week, um, hopefully I can come back online again on the same kind of time on Sunday here on YouTube. And I've got to work on the nose and add all the detail within the nose and just the, the little cheeks here. <laughs> I know, lovely, aren't they? But there won't be that much in there because it's going to be white. But we need some dark behind there to be able to show that light paint we're going to put on, that white, watercolour white. So next week we'll go into painting the nose, as I mentioned. We'll use watercolour white. So I'll show you exactly how to use that, how I tend to use it. And anything else we need to do other than that. But what I'll do off camera, as I mentioned, is work on the rest of the fur. And just get that all done, ready for you. So we can get straight to using the watercolour white on the nose and all that lot, okay? Right, so now then, the answer to my question. The answer to my question about my favourite colour right at the very beginning of this video. Anyways, at the time, I'm going to go now. No, um, the answer to the question is my colour chart look, which represents my colours here. Okay. Now, on my colour chart, hopefully it's not too shiny on the old screen there. And let's have a quick look. Uh, shiny there. No, it's not there. Okay. Now, the colour chart in question... Elizarin Crimson. Okay? Elizarin Crimson is my favourite colour. It is. I just love it. It's a lovely, lovely, rich, bright colour. And it's something I use on a regular basis throughout my videos. I'm sure my members know that anyway from the videos they watch. Um, so, Elizarin Crimson it is. So, I'm going to have a quick, quick look. Robert Brannan. Oh, yeah. I'll go through the questions in a minute, guys, before I disappear. Because I'm going to have to go now. But a very quick look and see who got that one first right. Who is it? Let's have a quick look here. So, uh, spitzing. Dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Has anybody got it? That's a question. I'm going to go through. I'll wave my hand to let you know I'm still here. Um, toes? <laughs> I've seen that, Jonathan. Uh, dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum. Let's have a quick look. Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Scarlet Lake. No, nobody's got it. I don't think anybody's got it on there. Oh no! Elizabeth and Crimson was the answer, and I don't think anybody got it this time round. Okay. Well, I think that means that next time I go live, you'll have to remind me, okay? Remind me next time I go live, I'll have to give away two free PDF tutorials. So you'll have to get definitely be online for that. Now each one roughly sells, because uh, I sell them on my website, as I'm sure people know, for between, in pounds, not dollars, I don't know what it is in dollars actually, between five uh, and, well, between four and four pound fifty and six pounds each. So you could be looking about ten pounds worth of, at least that, of PDF documents for yourself. So it'd be probably worth two PDF lessons just for you to have a play with. Uh, as a freebie from me as a thank you for being on here so next time round make sure that you subscribe down below click on subscribe then that bell icon and also if you're on my newsletter list remember to go to my Devon Artist website go to my newsletter sign that just log into it you know then you'll also be notified through there and one last thing don't forget if you want to have a go at painting some of my videos as well for free for free I know then again on my Devon Artist website I've got two for my free members on there, so just join up as a free member and there's a robin and a bee eater bird uh, to paint and also you get the photograph and the uh, the outline drawing as well. 
Okay. So until next time around, hopefully next week, I'm going to say goodbye and I want to say hello to everybody and thank you for being here today. We've had a good, I've got a lot of people here. There's a lot of people here today. Thank you very much indeed. And we'll see you next time around. And if you've got any questions you want to fire, you can still do that after this has gone live. We just have to put it in the main comments down below though, not in the live chat, obviously. Okay. Right. That's all right. No problem, Sue. Uh, very quick. I was tethering on the edge of madness, but your painting has brought a sense of calm. Thank you very much. I think your painting is better than the actual photo. Oh, you're a star. Thank you, Natalie. I got it wrong. I know, Julie. Sorry. Nobody did. I know. I'll, I'll scroll through as well, Andre. Um, <laughs> did not guess that. <laughs> uh, you have a lovely, light-hearted way of teaching while explaining everything so well. Thanks. <laughs> That's all right. So you're very kind. Uh, one of the, oh yeah, Robert. I meant to say this, Robert, before I go. Made one of the ray brushes after last week's video and tested it. Works well, better than the store bought. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Well, see, it's amazing what you can buy and what you can well, what you can actually make from your own materials, really, isn't it? Um, okay. I'm looking forward to using it for painting soon. Thanks for today. Okay, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye and until next week. Okay, ready? Bye for now. Now one of the painters I've been wanting to do for quite a while now is to paint a horse chestnut bud. So this is going to be quite a lot of texture, a lot of colour involved with this. Also quite a bit of detail as well. So I'm going to go through a variety of techniques along the way from wet in wet, dry brush, lifting off, using watercolour white. And one thing we will not be using this time around is black. I know, makes a change. So no black paint, no lamp black or anything like that. And don't forget, this is also real time video. So I talk as I paint, explaining every single thing I do as I go. So here's a little preview video for you on how to paint a horse chestnut bud. Right, so there you go. So I'll give you some ideas on how to paint a horse chestnut bud. So, find a little bit of that me time and let's get them brushes wet. And let's paint wildlife in watercolour on devonartist.co.uk. Thank you. Bye.